Ladies and gentlemen, I recommend you for the worst Pokemon about It's only been one week since the direct. Yeah, well, one can only take so many text posts. You want to make a fake leak and watch the YouTubers cover it? Well, we want to get it done tomorrow night if we want to watch it over the weekend. One day to make a leak, eh? Yeah, uh huh? Alright. Let's go over the- Wait a minute. Hey! Let's go over what we need for this project. Just a simple list of do's and don'ts to keep us on track. We need an animated 3D model in an environment to make it feel believable. We also have only about one day, 9 to 5, to complete the project in total. That means we shouldn't focus on anything too heavy like starter evolutions or evolutions because those usually are a bit more contentious. Maybe a start or mid-stage to some unknown Pokemon would work best. But enough goofing off, let's get to work, silly! Well, alright, so, uh, Galar's in the UK, right? Um, something British to start with? What about a scotch egg? Yeah, it started as a scotch egg. It's an egg encased in a shell, I mean, we can work with that. And so the uh, first concept was born. It's an egg inside of a shell. The egg is the eye. Yeah, not really digging the Cyclops look, so we're gonna shift one eye over and then give it a mouth. At this point I thought a bug type would really fit it, so I started gathering a lot of fly reference. Maybe something in the pupil or larval stages, so I don't get too far ahead of myself. It's alright, but uh... <laughs> Jaws will definitely hit the floor when they see a floating potato. We're just going for full fly here. Let's put some wings and some legs on there. Alright, this is looking good! I need help. No. What the? Hey, wait a minute. This doesn't look like a scotch egg. Well, we need a dash of sleepy, a big cry, a beak, and an eggy leggy. Huh. Thanks. I think it just needs one more thing. Something fierce, uh, like an alligator. Alligator bug? Yeah. You know what? That'll work. Let's just draw our final proportions real quick and then move on to 3D. To start things off, we're going to smooth a cube at least three times to give it that extra geometry that we need. Cube spheres are much easier to work with than default spheres, and it will help us when we cut holes for the eyes and legs. We use simple boolean operators to get rid of some cylindrical holes in the body. Quick bit of cleanup and we're good to go. The eye holes also required a little bit of shaping. For the last part of the main body, all we need to do is take some vertices on the side and raise them up, and voila, we have spikes. In addition to adding an indent to the body, we can also just pull out the front to create the basis for our large jaw. After adding a lot of edge loops, we can push the jaw into place and make it look like the picture. And then with the multi-cut tool, we can create the tooth line and then separate the body into three parts, the two jaws and the main shell. Using a socket as a starting point, we can shape out the noodles, legs, their legs. Adding another cubed sphere, we can create the interior shape, and then all we need to do is duplicate the leg five more times and push them into place. Now for the wings. <laughs> Certainly could have spent a little bit more time on them, but really they're just kind of glorified cubes. But we're on the clock, gotta move on. Time for UV mapping. Some people would call this process therapeutic. Others would call it torture. For those who don't know, this is basically the process we use to create 2D textures for 3D shapes, a bit like reverse papercraft. For this model, it was fairly easy, but we do need to cut out the spikes so we can color them separately than the body. With that out of the way, now we can paint our textures. The eye was definitely the most deliberate one we needed, but in the end we have a body, eye, and wing texture to work with within our 3D software. Bada bing, bada boom, we got ourselves a bugaboo. Let's set our lighting to flat to replicate Pokemon in some sort of way, and then we're going to move on to rigging. We start things off with a master joint. This is the joint that connects to all of the other joints in the system, and is used to move the body and all of its parts as a whole. From there, we can use two joint chains to control the upper and lower jaw. And uh, <laughs> voila, it looks terrible. It doesn't really matter, we're going to find a way to work around this. Gotta move on to the other parts. Our legs will require the most complicated part of the rig. We bind the leg to the joints and then use soft body to allow the leg to be manipulated a lot like a wet noodle. 
Right here, I'm just adjusting how much influence each joint has. Once that's done, all we need to do is save it out and bring it back in. Five times. It's kind of annoying. The wings were a little bit more complex than seen in the final product, but it was just a simple joint chain, and now we can move on to... Huh. Oh no. Not animation. Ah, it's been a while since I've done this. Set your time sliders to 180. We're gonna jump right in. Thanks to our master key, we can move the body up and down with a little bit of wiggle in it. Jump ship to Photoshop real quick and create our blinking eye, and then we'll just plug them right in. Then key the eye plates to disappear and reappear at a certain rate to create the illusion of a blink. To try and fix our mouth problem, we're gonna put a piece of geometry in the base of the mouth to try and make the holes less noticeable, but inevitably, we'll just have to move the jaw just a little bit to be safe. Kinda reminds me of Agnactor. <sighs> I definitely experimented a little too long on the wings. We eventually settle for a simple up-down two-frame motion like Yanma, Masquerade, Mega Scissor, and Pinsir. Skidaddle skidoodle, it's time to key the noodles. There is a small shortcut you can take when animating tendrils or tentacles in Maya. Select each joint down the chain and rotate it to create a nice curl. And remember to save so this doesn't happen. With no time to make shaders and no access to tune shaders, we create a makeshift outline using a duplicate of our model and back face culling. Okay, we're running out of time. We gotta do an environment and we gotta do it fast. Let's use a cylinder for the floor and extrude upward so we can create our wall with added geometry. Separate the two and open Photoshop. As you may have guessed, we're gonna use the cave for our environment. Next, make a ground and wall texture with a light spot added on so we can put a lantern next to it. Now we can model the lantern and the crystal shards that are sticking out of the cave wall. Because we're still using flat shading, we turn the transparency up on an orb and use that as a fake glow effect. Uh, spheres, not orbs. Sounds cool though. Well, eat your heart out, Kubrick. Our fake scene is complete. I also made two wood beams that didn't make it to the final shot. Time to move on to cameras. We're gonna replicate two simple shots from Pokemon, a slow zoom in and a rotation around the model. With some small adjustments to our focal length, we can create our camera animations, render them out, and then move on to the final step. We leave Maya with about three different sets of renders, and we can load them into Adobe Premiere and line them up to create our footage. Remember to realize this late in the game that you're missing the entire UI. Using the red and blue motif from the trailer, we create the enemy and player health bars. We're also just gonna borrow the Let's Go interface, we're really running out of time. And for names, missing no in Japanese. And hey, not half bad. It doesn't even look too bad on the Nintendo Switch, I mean, uh, look at this. My uncle works for Nintendo, and he got me a copy. Anyway, let's export our Premiere footage to YouTube, and then put that YouTube on the Switch, and then film that Switch with a phone, and then put that phone, you know, on the internet. Like, the footage. You get it. Okay, Friday morning. Time to post. But where to post something so infallible, so ironclad in its legitimacy, that it would be foolish not to make a video about it? Oh, uh... Right here. Yeah. This place. Well, little buddy, you did good. You did real good. But, with your purpose fulfilled, it's time to say goodbye. You've had many fans, and many enemies, and at least ten names, some of them expletive. Go now. Join your friends. And if you see the Space World demo Pokemon up there, tell them hi for me. Uh, why'd we do that again? Uh, I don't know. Oh yeah, uh, hold on. That looks like incredibly convincing Pokemon Sword and Shield gameplay. Uh, yeah, that's <laughs> right. <laughs>